what is programming to an interface? Some of you may have heard this phrase being used in your classes or by your colleagues. You may be wondering what the big deal is and what the advantages are of using interfaces. Interfaces may seem like incomplete versions of abstract classes, but they provide a really flexible way of organizing classes. Hopefully this video will clear things up for you and help you understand the benefits of programming to an interface. Let's start out with a very simple example. Say you have a game that involves animals moving and walking. In our example we have a cat and a dog, both of which extend the abstract animal class for speak and move. As you can see, uh, cat and dog both implement two different versions of speak and move. Um, and it's a pretty simple game. Basically, if the user enters, enters in the input cat, it will um, do, it will call the do animal move and speak method, which basically takes in a type of animal and basically just print out the speak and move calls. So here's what it looks like when you run it. That basically prints out what you expect. It prints by typing dog. It's a bark and a dog run. This is pretty good for our simple game, and this can even take in new animals as long as they extend the abstract animal class. Now, let's say your boss walks in and says that users don't just want animals, but they also want to use stuff like machines, and in the next version of the game, he thinks it will be a really great idea if we introduce cars into the game. Now we have a problem. Cars are not really animals, and even though they move, uh, they don't really speak. We could make the car class extend the animal class and just make the speak method return nothing. But that would be kind of awkward and doesn't really make much sense. Here's where interfaces come in handy. Interfaces provide a contract for all classes that implement them, so you can be assured that they will have a certain behavior or methods. Interfaces allow us to group similar behavior together. With Java, you can have classes that implement multiple interfaces, but you can only extend one class. This allows classes to pick and choose which interfaces to implement. This gives us a great amount of flexibility and will make changes to our code in the future a lot easier. Let's see how this will work in our example. Since our car class only has a move method, while our animal classes have both move and speak methods, we can group similar behavior together and create interfaces. We can create two different interfaces, which we'll call mover, which has a move method, and speaker, which has a speak method. Since our car class only moves, it will implement mover. It will implement the mover interface. While our animal classes both speak and move, they can implement both mover and speaker. As you can see, I've gotten rid of the two abstract methods since cat and dog both extend the animal class. They automatically implement both mover and speaker. I went ahead and modified the game class, and now we have two new methods called do move and do speak. Do move takes in a mover and prints out the move method, while do speak takes in the speaker and prints out the speak method. The class has been modified, and now for cat and dog, we basically create a new instance and pass them into the do speak and do move methods. This works because they both implement the speaker and mover interfaces. I also added a new option for car. And it is only passed into the do move method because in, because it only implements the mover interface. If we run this again, it still works as before. Cat prints out both move and speak, while car only prints out the move method. As you can see, our game is now flexible enough to not only add new animals, but pretty much anything else we'd like to add into it as well. If something requires a new behavior, we simply add a new interface and have classes implement that interface. So the benefit of programming to an interface is that it gives you a contract or an API to work against and doesn't really rely on any class hierarchy. This allows you to group classes together and write code based on a certain set of behavior rather than it being a specific type of class. This way you can group seemingly unrelated classes together like cat and car that have similar behavior. I hope this video has been helpful 
And I also thought it might be useful to provide a Stack Overflow post that kind of goes over this stuff in more detail in the description section. Please feel free to leave questions that you may have in the comments below or if you have suggestions for future videos. Thanks.